I want to tell you right now about the ability to drink and eat. It's something many of us don't really think about. We just do it. But for children born with swallowing problems, eating or drinking is not only extremely difficult, it can be very dangerous as well. Right now in Manitoba, it's estimated there are more than 600 children with swallowing problems. That's amazing. Right now, Dr. Gina Rempel, a familiar face for many of these children, she's not only uh, helping to develop feed, uh, feeding programs for them, now she's trying to develop a new tool to help diagnose and treat patients. Take a look. Hi, come on over to our chair, and we'll have a check, and then we'll watch you have a snack, okay? Young Shane Dixon has cerebral palsy. Because of the neurodevelopmental disorder, he has difficulty swallowing. What we try to do is try to see which textures are the safest for the children to process. Okay. You're sounding really good. Too. Dr. Gina Rempel works with Shane and other children with swallowing problems. Right now, she sees about 250 children in a clinic at Children's Hospital. She helps develop safe feeding programs for them. With funding from the Children's Hospital Research Foundation, Dr. Rempel is embarking on a research project that she hopes will result in a new diagnostic tool. These moving x-rays are currently the most effective way to discover swallowing problems. This x-ray shows a normal swallowing pattern. See how smoothly the food runs down the back of the throat? But in a child with swallowing problems, the food gets caught at the back of the throat and can actually end up in the lungs. The immune systems get going to try to fight this foreign body that's there, and it can result in, in lung scarring, it can result in pneumonias, and quite a bit of illness. Okay, that's just a fancy microphone. <laughs> Dr. Rempel will study what normal and abnormal swallowing sounds like in children. This is the first time a study like this has been done. We can listen with a specialized microphone taped to the child, which is analyzed by a computer then, so we get a correlation of not only the way they breathe and swallow, but also um, of whether or not we're actually hearing the food going down the wrong way. So he has an expiration immediately after. We think we would add a very important diagnostic technique to our regular clinical evaluation, because it could be done as often as we want in a setting that we want with food that the child's comfortable with. This is the food that Shane gets. It's a Nutrin 1.5, and in that can, he'll get 375 calories, which for him to eat that would take us the better part of the morning and part of the afternoon. So Because swallowing is so difficult for Shane, he gets his meals from a feeding tube. Learning to eat is important for socialization and, of course, pleasure. And we go... Chew, 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 if we can understand what normal swallowing is, what abnormal swallowing is, and if we can find some non-invasive tools to, to look at this uh, in detail um, and to provide good information for families in developing a feeding program for their children, uh, we'll all be much better off. Yeah, ah, you did great. <laughs> Just super. And joining us here, Linda Dobbins, as well as Shane. Hey, Shane, there's Shane having fun here at the picnic today. And we've also got the uh, grandparents back here. Uh, Linda, uh, talk about Dr. Uh, Rempel a little bit. Dr. Rempel is wonderful. We were sent to her after um, we'd been tested and we'd been going through a lot of stuff. Shane already had the tummy tube. And uh, he'd spent about two and a half, three years going through testing and, and finding out the problems. And it was all tied into the cerebral palsy. And it was finally after we'd, we'd uh, gone through all this, we went to Dr. Rempel, and it was the first time that anybody would ever watched Shane eat. Wow. With all the problems he'd had, nobody ever sat down and ever said, how does he do this? Right. And uh, it was her, her watching that that we realized that, you know, well, even with his... Uh, G-tube in there. We still tried to keep him eating as much as we could. Yeah. And uh, it was her um, seeing this that we realized he's never going to gain weight if we keep making him eat orally because, yeah. uh, you know, monitoring how he his temperature climbs and how right. hard it is for him. So yeah. uh, we just kind of fell in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Shane, you have a beautiful son. Yes, and I know how excited you are about uh, all the work that, uh, that Dr. Rempel has helped you mm -hmm. with. And, uh, and and we have to thank you for coming out. And oh, thank well. you, Shane, for coming out today, buddy. Because, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Greg would have been here. Well, you know, you know, you know what? Uh, are you really? Is that what Dad's doing today? He's farming yeah. today, yeah. Yeah. You got you got to get out there and help Dad, Shane. Now, well, come he's, on. He's the chief gopher with Mom. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, grandparents. Good to see you all here today. This is the kind of stuff that your dollars do. 
helps people like Shane and, and Linda and her husband and this family. Something that we don't, you know what, swallowing. I mean, we all take things like that for granted. I first watched the telethon six years ago, um, or five years ago, and Shane was about four months old, and we hadn't quite realized what kind of problems we were looking at. And at the time, I thought, how would anybody live through that? Yeah. Like, how do people stand with kids in the hospital? But you go through it, and you see the wonderful care and all the special things that are done for the kids. It's, uh, it's, it's not nice, but it's uh, certainly... Uh, a lot more wonderful than it could possibly be. <laughs> well, you have a beautiful, strong family, and you, Manitoba, this is, you know, I, there's nothing that will sum it up better than this. All you have to do is pick up the phone and help. We don't care if it's a dollar, if it's uh, two dollars, whatever you can afford, but you've got to pick up the phone. The phone numbers are 784-1997 inside the city, one 502 4660 When Linda watched the telethon all those years back and didn't realize that Shane would maybe need Children's Hospital help someday or Children's Hospital Research Foundation help, uh, you've got to try and, and give us a hand. And